I've been using this 3-in-1 charger for my rechargeable AA and AAA batteries for no kidding the last 25 years. I never gave it a second thought because it seemed so simple. Just put the battery in, the red light goes on, and it's charging. Except I never knew when to take them out. Sometimes the light would turn off, which made it obvious, but not always. So that got me curious. How long should these batteries be charging? And how does that compare with what the charger is actually doing? Now that I got myself a net deck, I have just a tool to find out. And spoiler, what I found out led me to replace my old charger with this one. But let me start with the first question. This is actually relatively simple to answer, but not to implement. Keep in mind that what I'm going to talk about applies specifically to nickel metal hydride type batteries, which are the most common rechargeable double and triple A's on the market now. This graph shows the voltage and temperature of a typical battery as it's being charged. The charging begins about here, and then you can see that battery voltage starts to increase, rapidly at first, and then more gradually. Notice that for a long time the battery temperature only increases slightly while charging, and then it takes off. This temperature inflection point is a good indicator of when to stop. Before this point, the bulk of the current applied to the battery is stored as the battery's charge. After this point, the full battery can't accept any more charge, but the current being given by the charger has to go somewhere, so instead it's turned into heat. Charging too far past this point will cause degradation and reduce the battery's lifespan. Charging any less means you're not going to get the battery's full capacity. Unfortunately, I don't know of any charger that uses temperature to terminate charging, so the other, more common way to tell is voltage. When a nickel metal battery gets full, its voltage stops increasing and often dips back down. You can see that this voltage phenomena and the rapid temperature rise happen at about the same time. The issue here is that the voltage drop is really tiny. In this example, only about 0.02 volts, and it's affected by many factors, like how fast the battery is charging and how old it is. Sometimes it even just flattens out. Overall, it's just not as reliable of a method to determine the end as temperature is. Here's the test setup I put together to monitor what my charger is doing. In the charger itself is a AAA sized dummy battery with contacts on either end. The wires coming off connect to a fixture which holds the real battery. This way I have better access to measure the battery's temperature and more room to attach wires. The current flowing through the battery goes through this board at the bottom of the fixture which measures it and translates it into a voltage signal. And the temperature is measured using a thermocouple in a bracket that presses it firmly against the battery's surface. The rest is just a power supply because the current measuring board isn't passive and of course the NetDAC data logger from my previous video. I started with one of my oldest AAAs, the Rayovac branded one. I first discharged it down to 0.9 volts and then plopped it into the charger. Here's the first 10 minutes of charging. This graph was made from the data collected by the NetDAC. Charging starts here and the battery is given about 110 milliamps of current for about 2 minutes. Then the charge current is stepped up to about half an amp. The voltage starts climbing and shortly after the temperature does too. Here's a graph of the entire charge cycle and two things stand out. First, the charger missed the point it should have stopped and continued charging for an additional 15 minutes adding 120 milliamps past capacity. And second, the charger didn't actually stop here. It just reduces charging current down to 100 milliamps again. The funny thing is that the indicator light actually went out somewhere here even though it was still giving current to the battery. I'm not sure how much longer it would have kept going if I hadn't stopped the test, but this was at least 2 hours and 200 milliamps of additional overcharging. So, not great. In comparison, here's that same battery in the Panasonic charger. Notice the charging stopped exactly when it should have, just as the battery voltage flattened out. Here's a zoomed in view, and considering it uses voltage to determine the stop point, not temperature, I think this is as good as you can reasonably get. The battery temperature did rise, however it only got to a maximum of 27 degrees. In comparison, my old Rayovac charger heated the batteries to 39. After the main charge cycle was completed, the Panasonic did 3.5 top up cycles over 20 minutes, giving an additional 50 milliamps of charge. This didn't appear to heat up the battery, so I'm going to assume it wasn't harmful. So already it's not looking so great for the Rayovac charger, but it gets even worse. Remember how I have 3 sets of rechargeable batteries? I repeated this test with my Amazon Basics batteries from 2018. When I put one of those into the old Rayovac charger, it just never stopped charging. I'm not sure why this happened, because there was a huge voltage dip, which should have triggered a stop. I let this go on for 10 hours before I just took the batteries out, at which time it was 46 degrees and had received 4200 milliamps of charge, 
over five and a half times its rated capacity. When I put these batteries in the Panasonic charger, it actually wouldn't charge them and just gave an error code. I didn't realize it then, but the batteries were basically shot and I correctly identified that. Despite appearing to work in my flashlights, albeit quite dimly and not for long, I found that the batteries had an internal resistance of over a thousand milliohms and showed zero capacity during discharge tests. Basically, they're better paperweights than they are batteries. I hadn't really thought about it until I made this video, but 1998 was a long time ago. Just to put that into perspective, in that year, Google was incorporated, the first MP3 player was sold, and Apple unveiled the iMac. Technologically, it's fair to say we've come a long way since this charger was made, so it shouldn't be surprising there are much better options now. All that being said, it's hard to estimate exactly how much avoidable wear on the batteries was caused by the Rayovac charger. Seeing how I have something better now, it's kind of a moot point anyways. Or maybe that'll be an experiment for a future video. I wanted to keep this video short, but know there's a lot more fascinating things going on during charging than what I talked about. Like, what's up with these dips in voltage and current? Also, I know these rechargeable batteries aren't exactly mainstream in 2024. The trend now seems to be built-in batteries for everything. But for flashlights... I think they're still a really good option. When your batteries die, you can just throw in a new set and be back in business rather than plugging in your light and waiting for it to charge. Besides, I already have so many it wouldn't make sense just to throw them all away. If you're interested in picking up this charger and want to support the channel, I included an affiliate link in the video description. Thanks for sticking with me. If you enjoyed this video and want me to cover more topics like this, let me know by hitting that like button, maybe even leave a comment. Till next time, don't overcharge your batteries.